did you decide to come here? Um, I mean, it's been a process. You know what I mean? It's been a couple of month process of, you know, um, dialogue, you know, um, every week, uh, Rand, Denard, uh, my agent, myself. Um, so um, it's been a process, but I mean, it was um, definitely the best place for me, you know, um, in the fact of just knowing, you know, the caliber of Coach Denard is, you know what I mean? Um, you hear it around the league, you see it. Obviously, I got friends that he's coached. I spoke highly of him. So um, it's just one of those things where like, it worked out and, you know, he really wanted me here and I wanted to be here also. Now that you got a brief exposure to him, what are your thoughts on the aggressiveness, the tone setting, and right. how that matches what you want to do? I mean, that's the type of person he is. You know what I mean? If you're around him just on a – you know, on the telephone, you could tell the type of person he is. So, you know, for me, I think that's dope. You know, I mean, I think let's get after him, let's be aggressive. You know, um, let's get ops, go get the football, and um, let's go. You know, be physical. What that's you know about this team and how you think it fit in. Um, I mean, even you know, when we played you guys um, when I was in Seattle last year, we played. You know, it was a tough game. Came down to the end of the game, and um, some very good players over there that you know they were missing. So, um, the fight of the team. You know, they they fought hard. They played well, and um, obviously, it worked out in Seattle's favor when I was there. But you know, you you kind of keep that in the back of your mind when you hear from these teams. You know, um, of who, who they got, and um, you know, uh, Will didn't play last year against us, but um, he's back. And you know, some of the games that he played last year, you know, they were very impressive. How much did Jamal help in the recruitment process, so to speak? I mean, it helped. You know, what I mean, that's my dog. That's one of my best friends. We've been knowing each other, you know, for so long. You know, I think Ma was like 16, 17 since when we first met. So. Um, it played, it, you know, it played a good part, but, you know, he also gave me my space and, you know, let me make my own decision. Um, he knew, you know, I was at home with my family and, you know, just just chilling, you know what I mean? Working out, being ready to go. And uh, when the time was right, I was going to be out here. How long do you think it's going to take you to get into playing shape? I know they've got you a little bit of a pitch count now. Just how do you think you're going to get into things? I mean, I'll be fine. You know, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, been very consistent in the way I work, um, very consistent in the way I go about my body. So, um, you know, I'm just out here learning, um, be around the guys, you know, bring veteran leadership, you know what I mean? But uh, when it's time to go, I'll be ready to go. Was it a clean break, break with Seattle when it finished there? And uh, how, how did you take that? I mean, I, I knew, you know, I mean, I knew last year when I restructured my deal, I knew um, exactly what it was going to be. You know, um, I knew my cap here was going to be super high. And um, it was either, you know, you go out, you make your fourth consecutive Pro Bowl and you play well, or who knows the way the safety market went this year, how it would have went, you know what I mean? But um, at the end of the day, you know, I had some good times there. You know, like I said, three out of my four years, I made the Pro Bowl. Last year was the only one I didn't. So um, people want to call that a down year, you know, call it what you want. Um, it is what it is. You mentioned your consistency with your body. It's pretty rare to, to have a player play four years without missing a, a single game. What is it that you've found in your history that, that is the key to not only staying healthy, but playing at such a high level? I mean, I give myself a break. You know, um, I truly give myself a break. Um, I work, you know. I fell in love with the Peloton, and, you know, that's light workouts for me on my body. And um, I have my chef back home in Texas. so. Um, it's just a small thing. You know, I've been around the game. My brother played 12 years, so um, he was a guy that played a lot of games and a lot of starts and rarely missed games, too. So a lot of it is God-given, um, you know, blessed. Um, but, you know, I take care of myself, and, you know, I, I know how to decompress and get away from the game, too. I got three beautiful kids, so um, I get away from the game, get my body a rest, and um, just get back to it when it's time to work. Your tape, kind of, your tape kind of speaks for itself, but how would you describe your game, what the Titans are getting in you, and, and maybe what you bring at this stage of your career? I mean, there's no stage in my career. Um, I'm 31, you know what I mean? People act like you get to 30, you can't play dead, you know what I mean? I, I play well, you know what I mean? I, I, I do all the things that you need me to do. Um, I go get the football. I've been very consistent in that, um, you know, top 10 in the last however many years, top five, you know, in the last however many years. So I go get the football, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I want to be physical. I want to tackle. I want to do those things. But I also want to, you know, um, help guys learn the game, you know, um, very cerebral in what I do. And, um, you know, I take this serious. You know, it's my job. And, um, 
you know, when I'm when I'm dialed in, when I'm ready to go, it's you know, it's go time. I don't know so how much you knew of you know Monty Cooker before you got here, but what do you like about his game and, and the opportunity to work with a guy like that who's who's I mean, I, I've been watching Hook because me and Kevin Byer are great friends. Um, so I always watched, always, you know, looked and, you know, saw him. And Hook wore 37. I wore 37 for a couple of years. So I was kind of interested to see, like, you know, who is that? You know what I mean? And, um, he's been playing well for a long time. He's very one of those, one of those guys that's very underrated. And, um, you know, you know, my job is, uh, you know, help him out as much as I can. And um, obviously he'll be helping me trying to learn my way around here and figure these things out. But um, I think it'd be really good. And I think um, we're going to be really good. So we just got to keep working. You sign a deal and then that gets torn up. And then you're sitting on the market and you're seeing all these other safeties go. Mm -hmm. At some point, like, do you start to develop a chip on your shoulder? Or was that just like, I'm waiting for the best opportunity? How did you approach that? I mean, for me, bro. I tell everybody this, bro. I was six round pick 200, you know what I mean? So, like, I always had a chip on my shoulder, you know what I mean? Like, I've always felt that, you know, the things that I do, nobody expected me to do, you know what I mean? But I expected that out of myself. So, for me, yeah, you know, I saw all the stuff, you know, um, you tear the deal up, man. Cool, you know what I mean? You release me. But for me, it was never no rush, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm 31. I'm going to year 10, bro. I got a family. Um, I'm building a house in Texas, you know, I play golf, I do all these different things. So for me, never was no rush from my standpoint. I'm going to be in shape, I'm going to run, I'm going to do all my stuff. So um, for me, it never was, you know, any of that. But, you know, it definitely still, it ticked me off a little bit. But at the same time, I'm, you know, I've been blessed, bro. I've seen, this is my fourth contract, so I'm good. You got to get too far ahead, but next week you guys will practice against your former team. What are your right. thoughts on that? I mean, it'd be a cool opportunity. You know, I see those guys. I haven't seen a lot of them. You know, I've seen some of them this offseason, but haven't seen a lot of them. And I get to see my guys, and, you know, we'll compete, and we'll go on about our business. But, you know, I still talk to so many of those guys, bro, and so many of those guys hit me up when I signed here. Um, we kind of knew this was going to happen for the last two weeks. So I've been telling them I was going to see them pretty soon. So um, excited about that. You've got an excellent reputation as a leader, and you've done it once before. How do, how do you – ease into that role with a new team as you're learning a playbook and stuff? I mean, for me, I don't, I don't step on toes. You know, I'm here to compete. I'm here to work. You know, I'm a professional in what I do. And um, for me, I mean, I'm the oldest guy in the room, but at the same time, I like to consider myself young. You know, I mean, I, I have, you know, three nephews who and freshmen in college and, you know, junior in high school, sophomore high school, and I hang around. I be around them a lot. So, you know, I stay, I stay in touch and all that stuff. So for me, you know, I just try to fit in, play my role, and you know, when guys need help, they ask me, and you know, um, I'm obviously going to be, you know, about the details and all that. But you know, I don't step on toes, bro. I'm a chill guy. You know, I'm, I'm from Texas, bro. We just be chilling and um, hanging out, and you know, just do what we do. That's all we do. Stay in our lane. Thanks a lot. I forgot who the heck that was. <laughs> hey, well, I don't know how close you were with City Charles, but how surprising was that to kind of hear that one of your linemen retired in the old camp? Uh, I, just, I just wish him the best. It, it was definitely a, a shock to all of us, and uh, we want to make sure that he has his privacy and his comfort and his decision. But, you know, I, I love the short amount of time. I love the short amount of time that I had with Sadiq. And, um, yeah, I wish to talk to him. Here pretty soon to kind of trying to hear if he's open to it, but uh, all I gotta say is I wish him the best in the rest of his career. Yeah, going to be a next man up for that right guard position on the, everywhere really on that offensive line as you guys continue to build chemistry. How is that line working? How has it been so far through training camp? It's been good. I mean, uh, they've, they've really come along the last couple of weeks. So uh, we're in a much better spot now than when we started. Um, you know, Bill's been working working them really hard. Lloyd's been you know just a, a great man for them to hold it down up front. Uh, and the last couple of days, I feel like we've been able to come into our own a little bit and feel more comfortable with the different kind of looks we've seen. And we got to give Denard credit for this, just the amount of looks that they've been able to give us, um, all the stunts, all the different games, all the different fronts. Um, and it's, it's kept them on their toes every single day, and it's made them better. So you look at the back shoulder, you look at the deep pass. Like, what does a day like today with all these connections with, with uh, Ridley, like, what does that do for the chemistry and confidence? Oh, it, yeah, those are just a couple types of connections we haven't really been able to hit too consistently here during camp. So that was definitely great for the confidence. I'm um, getting more and more comfortable with him every single day. Um, hitting the, the deep one down the red line was uh, was one we've been working on. And to get it in sync, get it in rhythm, I'm excited to watch the, the tape and 
I think it's going to look exactly like we drew it up. So uh, that's that's what you love, and you got to got to make plays like the back shoulder and and have a feel for that. And so to get those reps are really valuable. And I know that we're going to have to make plays like that if this team wants to be successful. Is there a chemistry with the offensive line, you know, specifically with the, kind of the two new guys now and the first group on the offensive line on the right side? Is there a chemistry between the quarterback and the line the way that there is a chemistry between the quarterback and the pass catchers? Uh, yes, I'd say so uh, to a certain extent. Uh, it's knowing your strengths and weaknesses of your guys. Uh, I think I could point to a couple things of just knowing maybe where it's more so based on the defense and what their moves are and the kind of pressures that we're expecting and uh, pass rush moves as, as to where they potentially could get, you know, lose some leverage and that could affect where, you know, our escape pattern is or where our movement in the pocket could be. Um, but I, I, I don't think that there's as much as a, a technical chemistry uh, as there is with the guys you have to have outside, just with how precise a lot of those throws have to be. But it's more of a feel thing. You're not really looking at the guy, obviously. It's, it's feeling where he is in space and being able to move off of that and have comfort, comfortability to move in any direction, regardless of what happens. Was it tough with all the changes last year that you had when you were playing to adjust to that with different guys around there? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's just more so the feel thing rather than being aware of who the actual guy is. You can't, it's, it's hard to change your mindset of playing in terms of like, I can really only go, you know, one, two to check down here. Oh, oh I can actually get through my read this play. It, it's something you can't say or think of pre-snap. It has to be a feel thing throughout the play as it progresses to know what's appropriate in that moment. Um, so no, I didn't pay much, much mind to it. I just tried to instill as much confidence as I could into anyone who was up there doing their job. And that's all you can do. In terms of, me and, in terms of playing the position, how much have you had to kind of make yourself and condition yourself not to go for the home run every time, but accept the singles and doubles that are there, if you will. Uh, yeah, just more reps and just more seeing out the defense and how it plays out, uh, knowing what certain situations, rec I mean, push you to not push the ball downfield. Like today, we had a guy bust a route, and we had the complimentary route behind it and tried to stick it in there. Uh, I'm, not only is that route not there, that first one, but it's not doing his job to open up the second route. So I mean, that's just one thing I have to think about. Uh, if someone busts, and instead of trying to make the hero, hero play, move on, get it corrected, and uh, just play the next play. Is that something you kind of had to train yourself to do? Uh, yeah, I think it's just as situations come up and you get more reps, uh, you make those mistakes, and you try not to make them again, and you learn from them. Um, but. Yeah, it's just uh, it just comes from reps, and you have to train yourself through the reps, but also mentally outside of the game to make sure when you get in, you're ready. What's most important for you on, on Saturday, Will? I'm sure you won't get a ton of snaps, but what are some, some of the most important things you want to see? Just clean operation. Um, I want to make the just the right plays. Um, not trying to force anything. Uh, just. I know we're not going to be doing anything too, too exotic, and uh, that's the point. We want to make sure that we're on our stuff and that we're able to do the basic things, and I can do the basic boring stuff, which I can't get bored of. Um, so as a player, I need to understand that. And regardless if it's you know five drives, one drive, whatever, um, we've got to make it consistent because we've done a good job of kind of trending in the right direction here during camp, but that consistency is, is really the one thing that we want to make more consistent. The guys that just you were with last year that you've seen make big strides this offseason so far in camp, I guess, at the receiver position? Uh, I mean, you got to give give cre uh, credit to NWI. Like, Nick's been playing well. He's he's always been a guy who's on his stuff, and other receivers are always looking to him to learn from and to make sure that they're on their stuff because they know Nick's going to come in prepared every day. Um, he's a guy who doesn't get enough credit around here in this building, uh, deserves a lot of uh, opportunities, and, um, you know, he got paid for a reason. So he's, uh, he's such a great part of this team, and he deserves, uh, you know, a lot of looks. Uh, disappointing. We got to be better. I mean, that's an offensive drill. I don't know what the percentages are exactly, but they've definitely got had a speed the last couple of days. So, um, you know, I try to get them fired up, try to get them um, get the competition flowing in that period. Uh, I got to be better, put the ball in, uh, you know, better spots and in better timing. Um, but, you know, only our second time being able to really work red zone one on one. So it is a little different. It's a feel thing, but uh, we got to be better down there. And that's just the bottom line. Does pocket awareness been for you this offseason? Is that something you focused on? And if so, like, what are the things you do to try to improve? Yeah, uh, a lot. I mean, you, you hear, especially early in my career, I had a habit in college, you know, of like most guys, they don't want to 
move into the pocket and move into pressure, and they feel like they're most safe, you know, back there and being able to look up and just bounce back around. Um, we got a, such a great inside push from our D line with with Sweat and Jeff. There's been certain times where, where in most pockets you're comfortably able to move up, just being able to feel that inside push, and knowing when you don't you can't move up that much, and it's more of an in place reset opposed to an upward. So, a few of those times where. I'm feeling kind of someone on my chest or not really being able to finish my throws. Like, I know that that's because, like, um, I might have just moved up a little too far in the pocket and I'm going to be okay with just setting back there a little bit. So that's a situational thing. It depends on what team you're playing, the kind of defensive front, uh, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, but uh, Jeff and Sweat have been giving us great looks, and, you know, some, they're going to win sometimes, and i got to understand that and feel that and be able to just set back in that pocket and be able to deliver the ball well. I know you're thinking a million things, but I'm talking about, like, before you go out on the field, have you ever given thought to that period, how the linemen have the guardian caps? And you ever thought about how, it, you know, hitting your hand on their helmets, how that could keep you from actually getting hurt? That's a good point. I never really thought about that. Um, it certainly happened a few times um, in my career where you just come down and you know, whatever to your finger, and it's not fun. Uh, so I've maybe happened once or twice this, this camp, and it might have been worse if they didn't have the caps on. So it's, I never thought about that, though a little bit about practice pressure. Is it a good simulation generally of game pressure, or is the fact that in the back of your head you know they're not going to hit you kind of make you behave differently? It's a little different, um, you know, especially when you're working like your screen game and stuff like that, like which relies on the you just wanting that D lineman just to be rushing upfield. But because they know they can't hit you, they can like kind of ease up on it and retrace for the screen easily. And then it's also not necessarily realistic. In terms of how or if we wanted to evade like a defender coming off the edge, they can't get close enough for for us to like actually work that. So um, there are certain es escapes and like ways to move that aren't going to be much different from the games, whether you're moving up and out, whatever. Um, but we just try to teach our guys to not get close enough to us as to the, we're not going to hit them with our arms. So uh, it's similar, but you're not going to be ever 100% identical. Do you notice sweat much out there across the line of scrimmage from you? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, we, we know where he's at. He's not hard to miss. Um, but uh, he does a great job giving those guys good looks up there and working them. Uh, our guys are getting better in the strong or in the run game and the pass game uh, for, from holding his um, from him up. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's been a good player for us, and I'm proud of how he's come out here and handled his rookie season so far. They talked about the simulation between practice pressure and game pressure. Do you think that you need the preseason reps of the potential game pressure where you can get hit in order to be ready for Chicago? Uh, yeah, I think they'll help. Um, I'd love to step off the field not being touched, but you know, it's, uh, uh, it's something that's going to be uh, part of the game, obviously, and I have to understand what my plan of attack is for when I do uh, see that pressure. And um, you know, I'm just excited to play these preseason games out in whatever capacity they want me to. Um, and I'm going to respond to pressure how I see fit. Brian talked about, and when he met with us this morning, about how he'd showed you and Calvin a bunch of the cut-ups on go balls and things like that of you know, receivers and quarterbacks from years past. What, what, what kind of things did you take from that little session? Um, I think just the timing, like really understanding uh, the timing of the throw, trusting it. Um, I think like sometimes when I'm rearing up and I know I'm going to throw a go ball, it's comfortable for me to like almost put all of my arm into it. And that could be, you know, like a, a 50, 55 plus yard down the field throw. But looking at the statistics and like where a go ball is typically caught, um, it might not be that long most of the time. So if you're really trusting it, instead of taking the three hitch hold and throwing it, you know, as far as you can, um, understanding that there could be a different timing to it and uh, being comfortable with maybe not throwing it 100%, taking a little off of it. But we'll continue to work through it. Uh, it was good to connect to them once a day. But um, yeah, it's gonna gonna have to be a you know part of our offense that we're gonna be good at. Well, do you remember how you felt going into preseason last year and how that differs to going into it this weekend? Uh, yeah, I remember being nervous. It was um, you know going to Chicago and you know historic, historic stadium like that, and um, me and Malik being able to go out there and play. Uh, it was definitely uh, nervousness and. I remember it stunk. I had, I had an injury I was dealing with, and I came back for it and then re-injured myself in that game, and I couldn't play the rest of the preseason. But um, yeah, definitely just more confidence and uh, not as much nerves. Definitely going to still be some nerves, as there always is, regardless of what game, uh, preseason or not. So looking forward to it, to leading these guys and going out there and just doing our thing. Thanks, 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 Thanks for
can you describe a little bit, Roger, um, some of the, the basic differences that, that you and the other corners um, have now under, under Denard, say, as opposed to the, the previous system in, in terms of, you know, I guess the buzzword has been aggressive. How, how does that play out for you? Uh, yeah, um, I would say the difference between, like, all of us is that I say we all have our different style. Um, you know how Denard, he like our defense is aggressive. There were guys, I would say, we weren't aggressive, but you can tell, like, that's our style. And they brought that on. You can tell the guys we brought in new, like Snead and Cheeto, you can tell how we want everybody to be aggressive. So throughout this whole competition with the offense, I see a lot of guys stepped up trying to compete and just be aggressive and attack the offense first. What have you known about Quandre Diggs from afar and what's like maybe being his teammate? What have your early interactions been with him? You said Diggs? Right. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, you just tell that he's a vet guy. I mean, like, he caught on pretty fast. You can tell, like, he was out there a little bit. And you can tell just from his old defense scheme and stuff, he already know, like, how the game goes. And you can tell, like, he made a, couple, a play out there, like, quick, right on the field. And that's just like a vet move, I'll say, just from his experience of playing football these past years. Well, what's the process going to be like and kind of getting on the same page with him and getting him up to speed? I mean, I wouldn't say it would be hard, you know, because he's a vet, I guess. I mean, defense, they all kind of like the same. It's just different terms, different names for it, I would say. But um, I would say it wouldn't be hard for him. We just got to keep him up on our pace and everything. But I feel like it will be great because him and Jamal played with each other before, so they'll catch up pretty fast, I would say. They brought in so many different guys at corner and safety with a lot of experience that you're still relative, relatively a pretty young guy. What what kind of things do you take from their games and tips do you take to kind of incorporate into your own game? Yeah, I mean, these guys they brought in, them guys I kind of look, looked up to, you know, great players from different teams and stuff. And you just tell by just how they practice. That's what I learned from them, just how they practice, like being 100% every day, being full speed every day with the practice and just being a leader. We know when, when they're not on the field, they bring the leader outside of the field. And I feel like that's what I learned from them is just being more vocal and just try to be a leader, just like them. A lot of options now with, with, for big nickel and different variety of packages and stuff. Brian went out of his way to say, we don't want to take Roger off the field very often. Uh, they expressed that to you, and is that reassuring kind of to know that despite all of this different stuff they could do, they, they want to make sure you're a part of it? Yeah, I mean, you see we got new guys and we have a lot of packages and stuff. Some guys come in and play the boss and they can take me out. But I say like, that's just part of whoever coach wanted to put in, just what position I'm in, that position I'm going to play. And I feel like I, I can be good in the box with the big nickel and all that stuff because I played in it before. So I know how to go with that experience and everything. Roger, with that room, it is interesting because you, you've got a mix of veterans, uh, rookies, guys like you who have been in the league for a few years. What's the, the vibe in that room with this being this and attacking mindset that Denard preaches all the time? It's great. I ain't going to lie. The energy is great in there. You can just tell how everybody just love the style that he's bringing over. Like the place he brought in, you know, Ravens used to play it. Eagles used to play and stuff like that. So it's just great because you can tell how why wow, these plays are really going to make us get our hands on the ball and just make us attack aggressive. So you can tell like each day as we learn the defense, we get more comfortable and that's when you play more confident and just go out there and play fast. Is it nice to know with him having that as a position, as an assistant in the past, the emphasis he kind of puts on that and, and knowing it's a big part of this defense? Oh yeah, most definitely. You can tell just from his coaching experience, it's, it's success. You know, guys make plays on him by getting coached by him. So it's just great just being coached by that kind of person because he pushes every day and in the means he's the same way just like on the field. So I feel like it's great having that coach who be on you everything about the little stuff. While you guys are so aggressive on the field, off the field, like the podiums, it seems like everybody's more relaxed. Is there something to that? Is that an accurate statement? And if so, you know, what has contributed to it? I don't feel like it's really in the guys. Like, I feel like a lot of guys are aggressive. Like, it just got to be that dog in you. You just can't, like, tell them about you got to be aggressive. It just got to be in you, really. And that's just part of football, really. And you can just tell how everybody that came on the team, you can tell that's how the coach wanted. And that's a part of everybody on this defense. So it wasn't really, like, hard to put everybody on board with that, being aggressive or being locked in, because everybody really got their dog in them. And that's what Denard liked about each and every one of us. Off the field, you guys seem more relaxed. Like I said, the podium, it, you know, it, it seems a comfort level. Is that just from experience being here, or is it the environment? What would you attribute that to? I would say more of experience, you know, just being on the podium, just talking about what you know. Um, and that's basically what we do. We talk about it off the field, talk about it in the rooms. It's just us about knowing our assignment. And once we know our assignment, we can be relaxed and talk about it, and especially on the podium. Roger Will said you felt like the defense won a lot of those red zone one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. reps. Um, defense has had a solid camp. How do you weigh that kind of success 
in camp versus how it's going to translate in the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, playing football, you know, people always say if you want to be good in game, you got to do it every day in practice. And I feel like that's our main thing as defense is we don't let the offense go in the red zone. That's when stuff get more like more aggressive. You got to be more smarter in the red zone because the field shrinks. So it's all about being more patient, stuff happening fast. It's really about knowing the game in the red zone. And our main understanding is don't let the offense go. So that's our intensity and energy every time in the red zone. How important the reps for you like on Saturday and in the preseason? Oh yeah, I mean with this, I mean reps will really be important in this first preseason game because I feel like this is our really first action like in front of the fans and everybody, especially in Nissan Stadium with this new defense. And I feel like it's going to be great and the energy is going to be there. We just got to like have fun and just unleash it because we finally get to play in the game. Football is back. Brownlee seems like a guy who kind of fits in the mold with, with you guys. What have your impressions been of him so far? Is that okay. Brownlee, Jarvis Brownlee? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a guy who stepped in right away. You can just tell just by off the field. You can tell that's the player, like, he's going to have some time playing. And I feel like he stepped there really fast. He learned the game. And, you know, that's just a part of him, how he play. He's aggressive, and that's what Denard like, and he shows that every day.